Hello there, you music lovers of all persuasions, you connoisseurs of CDs, you vinyl lovers and you secret streamers. How are you doing? Welcome to another video from Phil and Ben's full record jacket, which sadly doesn't have Ben on it. He'll be back soon, but uh, while he's away, he keeps encouraging me to do monologues. So it's kind of Ben's fault, but I'm going to do one that I really wanted to do uh, today. Uh, well, I, w I want to do it, but I, I didn't want to do it because I'm marking the passing of Robbie Robertson, best known as the guitarist and songwriter of that group, The Band, uh, collaborator with Bob Dylan and, and many other great artists and a superb songwriter. Um, I don't want to sort of get too, you know, d down. I just want to, to celebrate the music in this. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into the band and how Robbie Robertson became one of my favourite musicians. I kind of got into Bob Dylan in the early 90s. Um, so I started listening to Bob Dylan. Um, so I was in my late teens, I think, at that point, yeah, about 19 or so, I'd started to get, I was into the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and getting into Bob Dylan was the next kind of logical step, really, by exploring all this stuff, much of which I'd not heard a huge amount of as a kid. Heard quite a lot of music as a child through my dad, but he wasn't really into Bob Dylan, didn't have any of those albums. So it was all a little bit new to me, apart from the odd thing I'd heard on the radio. So I won't talk too much about Bob Dylan because I'm here to talk about Robbie Robertson. But obviously, uh, when I started to read more about the history of Dylan, I learned that he'd, of course, done his electric tour of Britain in 1966 after he'd originally gone electric in America in 1965. And he was backed by this group called the Hawks, who then became the band. Uh, the following year and had a career of their own. So having heard a few performances by the band with Bob Dylan, I then decided I was going to start listening and investigating a bit more of the band. And for me, uh, my real sort of the thing that really got me hooked on them, I think it's probably the case for many people. I taped off the TV uh, a showing of Martin Scorsese's film, The Last Waltz, which is a concert film, of course, of the band in concert with many guests, recorded on uh, it was Thanksgiving Day, wasn't it, in 1976, I think. Um, they did this concert at the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco. The band had decided by that point they weren't going to tour anymore. They hadn't said for sure they were splitting up, but they, they decided that they were quitting the road. And so this became a documentary about them and the whole thing about touring as a musician. There are there are talking heads interviews with Robbie and the other members of the group. Uh, Martin Scorsese interviewed them. So those, a few of those clips are interspersed throughout the concert. And there's an amazing roll call of performers uh, that they brought out as their guests, artists with whom they'd collaborated or had some relationship with. So uh, Bob Dylan, obviously, Neil Young, uh, Joni Mitchell, Van Morrison, Eric Clapton, uh, Muddy Waters, Dr. John. Just a, it's a fantastic concert. It's a really, really great film. I can't think that I've seen a concert film that's actually better than this. Maybe there are some... That, that compare in some way, but I think it probably would be my favourite concert film. So that really got me into the band. So then I started collecting all of the band's albums uh, on CD, which uh, in some cases I had to order from the United States. They weren't on; they weren't, they weren't easily findable in in record shops in this country in the nineties. But um, Ended up getting all of them, and then I've, I've been a fan ever since. So I do think they're one of the greatest groups in the sort of 
is it the classic rock genre? They invented their own genre, really. Uh, it didn't have a name at the time, but people now call it Americana. And I guess part of that is the fact that the band's music takes in a little bit of country, a little bit of blues, a little bit of rock and roll, a bit of folk, and sort of blends all that together in this very American style, even though they're, of course, uh, four-fifths Canadian. Levon Helm was the drummer and vocalist, was from Arkansas, but the rest of them were from Canada. So the fact they were from Canada, I think also gave them a little bit of a different perspective on the US and uh, and on America. And many of Robbie Robertson's songs, Robbie was the, the principal songwriter of the band, uh, many of his songs are set, you know, they could be, they're set in the past, you know, they're characters who are, you know, 19th century or, or some unspecified time in American history. But there's a lot of that sort of old time uh, feel to the lyrical themes of their songs, you know, songs about that are set in the US Civil War and songs about um, tent shows that traveled around the South and, uh, and all that kind of thing. So very much, you know, very unique in that way. And um, as I say, you know, they are considered maybe the, the the key band in starting off this genre, which is now known as Americana. Anyway, what I've decided to do is I'm going to pick 10 tracks by the band that are great. I'm not saying these are the 10 greatest. I'm not saying these are my 10 personal favorites. They're just 10 that are great. And I'm going to pick them. I'm going to force myself to kind of pick them at random because I've got 10 items here of the band. And I'm going to pick each of them out the many CDs. And I've got to pick a song off each one of them. So starting chronologically but not chronologically because this came out in 1975 but it's recordings mainly from 1967 it's the basement tapes credited to bob dylan and the band now this is an album that robbie robertson was involved in putting together i won't i won't go into the whole history of the basement tapes but to try and do it in 30 seconds bob dylan did his tour in 1966 uh, in the UK particularly, uh, got a lot of hostility from the folk fans who didn't like him going electric. Had a motorcycle accident when he was riding in New York State. Went to recuperate, living in this sort of rural place. Um, and members of the band came and hung around with him in the summer of 1967. And they did a lot of work. They they hung around in a hired house, this, this big pink house. Or big pink will come up in a moment uh, with the next album. But um, and they did, made a lot of recordings in the basement and they did lots of folk songs and lots of old old time country songs and things. And they also did what were essentially demos of new songs that Bob Dylan had written many of those leaked out on bootlegs and um, some of them got recorded by other artists but as a bootleg stopper they put out this album in 1975 uh, the basement tapes which contains not only songs where bob dylan sings but also recordings by the band which were actually from a slightly different period they're from demos for their first album but anyway i won't waffle too much about the basement tapes i'm a bit of a basement tapes geek but i've got to choose one on here that's got a great performance by robbie robertson um i love all the i like all the songs on this album to be honest in one way or another i'm just going to pick the opening track odds and ends very short only about 100 seconds long and you get a great uh i had some great lead guitar from robbie robertson he's playing on that in very much the style as he played on Bob Dylan's 1966 tour. So that's Odds and Ends, uh, Bob Dylan and the band first track. So what have we got here? Music from Big Pink, the band's debut album from 1968. This is the album that uh, Eric Clapton heard and he decided he was gonna stop doing psychedelic bluesy rock and he was gonna try and do music more like this. And George Harrison, was a fan of this album, and so was Paul McCartney. And, and I think almost 
everybody in in the music world was listening to this album. It wasn't necessarily massive, massive with the public, but it was absolutely enormously influential with musicians. So what have we got? Well, the most famous song on here by far is The Weight, and you can't go wrong with listening to that. But if I've got to pick another one from here, uh, that's a great song. Ooh, what am I going to go for? I'm going to go for In a Station, In a Station, which is sung by Richard Manuel of the band sings this song. Uh, great mellow song, lovely tune. Check out In a Station by the band. What's next? Well, it's the second album by the band, which is, if you don't know much about them, you might think would be their debut album because it's simply called The Band, but this is uh, the so-called Brown album from 1969. Pretty much a flawless record. I can't think there's a a moment where they put a foot wrong on this. It's 12 excellent songs. So which one am I going to go with? Um, famous songs on here include The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, the, the Civil War epic, and uh, Up on Crippled Creek. What am I going to go with on here? I'm going to go with, oh, it's so hard. It really is so hard. How about um, a really nice one that's kind of, it, it shows where Robbie Robertson was, Rocking Chair. Um, this is 1969. And the lyric, one of the lyrics in this song is, wouldn't it be nice to see the folks and listen once again to the stale old jokes? That's not where youth culture really was in 1969, but that was the sort of thing that Robbie was doing. But he did it so well. Um, it's just such a great album. I can't pick tracks off that. It's really hard to do. Stage Fright is the next one from the band from 1970. This album was remixed not long ago by the legendary Bob Clear Mountain. And in the remix version, they actually changed the track listing because Robbie Robertson revealed that the track listing that came out was um, was what Capitol Records wanted rather than what the band wanted. So it's very interesting to hear it in uh, the original version that they wanted to do. But I'm just looking at the original track list here. And um, what shall we go with on here? I'm going with... Um, a song that sums up the band in many ways, the W.S. Walcott Medicine Show. It's a song that describes an old-time tent show where there are uh, performers and um, people selling healing potions and stuff like that. Um, it's great, great tune. Um, Robbie plays great guitar on it as well, so check that out. Cahoots is the next album. This was an album that was a a comparative flop at the time and this one has recently been remixed as well and i think of all the band's albums this is the one that's really benefited the most from being uh pulled apart and mixed back together because i think it's definitely improved it there was always something about it that was a little bit a little bit off with the the the, the mix originally it didn't quite the music didn't seem to somehow breathe properly and I think now it does. Um, one of the tracks on here that I've always liked, maybe the live version is better, but it's perhaps the most rocking song on this album. That's Smoke Signal. Uh, Leave on Helm, the drummer, sings that. So I'm going with Smoke Signal from Cahoots. I was supposed to be doing this without thinking too much about it. So um, Smoke Signal from Cahoots, Rock of Ages, recorded at the Academy of Music in New York, New Year's Eve, as, uh, was it 1970, became 1971. I think that's when they recorded this. It was at the end of 1971. Can't remember now. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But it's a double live album, which really shows off the, uh, the alchemy that the band brought to the stage. Um, for a Robbie Robertson moment on this, well, I absolutely love their version of Don't Do It, which opens this album. But I'm going to I'm going to point you to a song which was, was from the second album, Unfaithful Servant. This live version of Unfaithful Servant has an exquisite little guitar solo by Robbie. I don't know how difficult it is to play, but it sounds great. So Unfaithful Servant from 
Rock of Ages. The next album the band released was Moondog Matinee, which was a tribute to the music that influenced them. So it's basically their rock and roll and soul covers album. Perhaps, you know, only only for fans, real fans of the band, this one. But it is a good cover. So I like this album. Um, a lot of tracks on here that are really good. I'm going to pick out Mystery Train, which is their very different take on the song that was made famous in the rock world by Elvis Presley. Mystery Train was done by a blues singer originally, and I was gone out of my head as to which one he was. Was it Little... Was it Little Willie John? Or was it another one? Oh, his, his name's on the top of my head. But anyway, Elvis Presley's Mystery Train is an early Presley classic from his son years. Um, the version by the band had some extra verses that Robbie Robertson wrote, and it's a kind of funky rock version of that. So worth a listen. This, I think, is a great album by the band, maybe their last great album. It's called Northern Lights, Southern Cross. And I'm just going to pick a song that a lot of other people would probably pick as well, uh, Ophelia. But it's great, and it's got guitar solos by Robbie Robertson, which he didn't do that often in the band. Uh, he did a lot of guitar solos when he played on stage with Dylan. He kind of he, he stopped being the guitar hero uh, so much in the band. His guitar playing was a bit more in the background and a bit more intricate. But yeah, Ophelia, great, great song. So let's go with that from Northern Lights, Southern Cross. The last album that the band put out in the original lineup with with Robbie Robertson in the band was Islands, which is a bit of a, well, it's a, it's a compilation of odds and ends and leftovers. It's not really a proper album. So it's fans only, really. Um, some interesting stuff on here. There's a great version where Richard Manuel sings Georgia on my mind. Um, there's, I mean, my favourite track on this by far is Christmas Must Be Tonight, which I, for me is the greatest rock and pop Christmas song of all time. So it's got to be that, hasn't it? Christmas Must Be Tonight by the band from Ireland. So there's just one left for my 10th great track featuring Robbie Robertson. I've got to have one from Martin Scorsese's The Last Waltz. So many great performances on this concert film. Um, Van Morrison's Caravan stands out. Joni Mitchell doing Coyote is really good. Muddy Waters doing Manish Boy is really good. So much of it is really good. But maybe one of my favourite moments on this is where uh, Eric Clapton's on stage doing further on up the road. Uh, Robbie Robertson, of course, is playing uh, guitar as well. Um, and Clapton's, does he break his string? Or is his strap? His strap breaks. Clapton's guitar strap breaks. So he's not able to continue the solo he's playing. So Robbie takes over. Uh, but they were doing this sort of guitar duel and then Robbie takes over. But I just think he's, I mean, I'm not a musician really. So it's difficult for me to say who's a great guitarist technically or who's not. But I've just always really enjoyed Robbie Robertson's guitar playing. And I just think he's, he's a, he puts a lot of feeling into his playing. And I think he's underrated. You know, I think he was underrated. People don't talk about him very often when when they talk about who were the great guitarists. But I think Robbie Robertson was one, as, as well as a great songwriter. Um, so there's just 10. If you've never really listened much to the band, I really do recommend diving in. They were really wonderful. I really, really think they were. And Robbie Robertson... I'm just so sad that he's gone. I mean, he was—he did that track about ten or two or three years ago uh, with Ringo Starr. They did it for some charity thing, and they did a—I'll put a link to it below—a version of the Wait, where Robbie plays guitar, Ringo's on drums, and a whole host of um, well, either sort of amateur or semi-professional, or just random, not famous uh, musicians from all around the world contribute 
to this. They're on five different continents, people in Africa, people in Asia, South America, all were put together on this track. And there's a video with little clips of each one. It's a brilliant version of the weight. And um, Robbie looked so well then, and he he didn't look 80. He was 80 when he died. Uh, so he didn't look it at all, neither does Ringo. Um, I'm just, you know, a little bit shocked that he's he's departed so soon. I'm very, very glad he got to finish his book, Testimony, which came out not that long ago. Um, but yeah, I've since I've been a fan of the band, I've I've witnessed the passing of Rick Danko and then Levon Helm. Richard Manuel, of course, died in nineteen eighty six before I, I knew anything about the band. Uh so Garth Hudson, the keyboard player, is the last of them still to be alive. Um he's pretty elderly now. He he was the oldest member. Um so quite amazing that he, he is the last one. But uh there you go. Great group. One of the great Canadian artists of all time, Robbie Robertson. One of the great Canadian bands of all time, The Band. And one of the greatest acts for me in rock history. So thank you, Robbie, for all that music. I will still be listening to it. I hope you will be as well. Join Ben and me for another video very soon. Thanks for watching. All the best.